Pelty in this video will discuss the weak beam dark field imaging in TEM. When we set up the weak beam condition, we usually do the G NG condition. The first G is the G vector we're going to use to form the image. The second G in NG is the G vector we're going to excite. In the example shown on the right, the 3G spot is excited. The intensity of 1G is relatively weak. To do the weak beam dark field image, you use the objective aperture to select the 1G spot to form the image. Also, in this example, the specific weak beam condition is G, 3G. G, 3G is the most widely used condition to form the weak beam dark field images. To help you understand how to set up the weak beam condition, I also made this animation. The first step is to tilt your crystal or your specimen to a low index zone axis. The red cross in the center is the optical axis. The dark spots are the diffraction spots. Bigger the spots, higher the intensity. Then you follow a Kikuchi band to form a two beam condition to excite 1G. After that, you perform dark tilt to tilt the 1G along with the optical axis. Next, you further tilt the specimen to excite 3G. As you excite 3G, the 3G spot will become brighter and the 1G spot will become dimmer. Now it is the weak beam condition for 1G. Then you insert the objective aperture and exit the diffraction mode to view the image. This is a very nice figure from the textbook to compare the two beam condition to the weak beam dark field condition. You should be very familiar with the setup of two beam condition now. The evil sphere will cut through the center of the direct beam and the center of 1G. In the ideal case, there's no excitation error in 1G and it is a strong beam condition if you use 1G to form the image. In the weak beam dark field condition, the first thing you should notice is the 0G from the direct beam does not lie along the optical axis anymore. The evil sphere now still cuts through the 0G, but instead of cutting through 1G, it will cut through 3G. Let's look at 1G. 1G now is along the optical axis. Because when we do beam alignment in TEM, we align everything along the optical axis. In this condition, since 1G is along the optical axis, using 1G to form the image gives you the best imaging condition. Also, the excitation error for 1G is large. The intensity of 1G is low. This gives you the weak beam dark field condition. Now, let's look at how we can use weak beam dark field technique to reveal microstructural features. I hope you still remember a concept called thickness fringes. In a two beam condition bright field TEM micrograph, you will see thickness fringes due to the dynamical contrast. The spacing of the fringes is equal to the extinction distance of that specific diffraction condition. However, in the weak beam dark field condition, the excitation error is large. So the spacing of the thickness fringes will be the effective extinction distance. From the equation here, you can see the effective extinction distance is smaller than the extinction distance. Therefore, the fringes will be more closely spaced. Also, the approximation is not dynamical anymore, it's kinematical. Moving away from the perfect crystals, let's look at dislocation imaging using weak beam dark field technique. Probably the weak beam dark field technique is the most widely used technique to do dislocation imaging because it offers a superior spatial resolution compared to the two beam condition. Let's look at why. In the weak beam condition, because most of the specimen is tilted in the way that the excitation error is large, the lattice planes in most of the specimen are rotated away from the Bragg condition. Recall that in the dislocation imaging video, we can see dislocations because the dislocation core bends the lattice planes around it locally to satisfy the Bragg condition. 
in the weak beam condition because most of the planes are tilted away from Bragg's condition. Only the bending that's so large, that's so close to the core of the dislocation can give you the Bragg diffraction. In this case, you have less lattice planes contributing to the dislocation contrast. This will give you a lower intensity but superior spatial resolution. The examples on the right shows the difference of the two-beam condition and the weak beam dark field condition. In the two-beam condition, it's hard to tell whether it's one or two dislocations. But from the weak beam dark field image, you can clearly tell there are two dislocations. These are either dislocation dipoles or two partials. Here is one more example from the textbook to show off the superior spatial resolution of the weak beam technique. In this example, part of the silicon dislocations they have dissociated, part of them they still have a compact core. By doing very careful g dot b and g dot r, you are able to reveal the dislocation partials and stacking faults separately. In figure a, you see both partial dislocations, but the stacking faults are invisible. In figure B, the dislocations are invisible, but you see the stacking faults. In figure C, you only see one partial dislocation. These kind of microstructural details are nearly impossible to be revealed using a conventional two-beam condition. Before wrapping up today's video, I want to quickly introduce you the scientist who invented or developed the weak beam dark field technique, Professor David Cocaine. Professor David Cocaine did his undergrad in University of Melbourne, then he pursued his PhD in the University of Oxford. The story I heard is that in 1969, while having afternoon tea, he had a discussion with his colleagues. Back then, when people were doing dislocation imaging, people only used the two-beam condition. Professor Cocaine asked, instead of exciting 1G, what if we excite higher order G? but still use 1G to form the image. And this leads to the development of weak beam dark field technique. In 1974, he moved to the University of Sydney as the director of the electron microscopy unit. And this is where I did my PhD. In 2000, he returned to Oxford and passed away in 2010. I hope by the end of this video, you have gained some basic understanding on the technique and the history of the weak beam dark field imaging. In the next video, we'll move to a new topic, high resolution TEM.